Mika Fighteri. Tēnā koe, Mr. Speaker. Tēnā tato katoa. I agree. Uh, thank you, um, Mr. Chair, for allowing me to take this call on um, on the Social Housing Reform Bill uh, Part Two. Um, and, sir, uh, my contribution uh, is really probably hoping to get some clarifications from the minister and the chair. I want to particularly address, sir, 50D, uh, 50E, 50F, 50G. And if I have time, I will also touch on 50L. Um, sir, uh, when we look at 50D, um, it talks about uh, the social housing reform objectives. Um, clearly, there's six objectives. And my question to the Minister is, is really um, the experience of, uh, of being in this House and when asking government members or ministers around measurements around poverty, for example, uh, we get a whole lot of um, confused responses. So in particular to 50D, uh, Minister, I'd like to um, ask you what measures uh, will be put in place to measure that these objectives are being met? And, and who will be responsible for monitoring. Um, given that uh, this legislation is likely to go through the House, I'd like to put a stake in the ground that we get measurements early on in your piece of legislation so that when we monitor the performance of this and meeting these social objectives, that we don't have any confusions <laughs> like we have um, in, in other areas um, of the government. So that would be um, nice to hear from the Minister. In terms of 50E, 50F, 50G, uh, Mr Chair, it talks about um, enabling the ministers uh, these enormous powers, uh, basically, to do as they will um, in terms of the social housing programme. And I listen intently to the minister as a former public servant. I valued the independence of delivering the administering the government of the day's programme. And I listen intently to the minister's response around why we feel that we need to empower ministers when we don't not only have uh, Housing New Zealand officials, but we actually have an uh, independently appointed board. And what I heard the minister say, it was about administering the government's programme. That's what she said that the reason why ministers are in this legislation and enormous power that we are giving to ministers is because we simply do not trust our public servants in Housing New Zealand. We simply do not trust the, the board members on the corporations. We don't trust them, and that is why we have to put ourselves in the role. Um, if I've got that wrong, please correct me, Minister, but when you said minister the government's programme, that's what we have public servants for. That's why, yes, we do. That's why we're renowned because we are arm distance from the Crown, is that you have a public servant. But in these particular clause that I, I mentioned, 50E, 50F, 50G, it clearly allows the ministers to act over and above the advice that they may get from the board, over and above the advice they may get from the officials. And, sir, when we get to that point, and may I just uh, slightly diverge to say in the late 80s, uh, the Chief or the Secretary of the Department of Labour at the time, Jazz McKenzie, led a public sector review on the basis that ministers of that time had way too much power. And he led a public sector review to ensure that there was armed distance between the Crown, the ministers, and the public service. And so my entry into the public service was in those late 80s. And I valued that, that we administered the programme on behalf of the Crown. And the Public Sector Act gave us that responsibility. And I feel, sir, that this piece of legislation caused that Public Sector Act into question. And so perhaps the Minister would like to comment on how she feels that public servants in this country do a great job now uh, seeing a whittling down or removal of the role and function and impartiality that all public servants, uh, well, in my time, um, valued, sir. And so um, I particularly have an uh, issue with those clauses. Uh, moving to 50L. And everybody, I guess, on both sides of the House, or particularly the ones that are working tonight on this side, uh, talked about the notification that 
Um, Ms. Sir, Sir. Mika Pfeiffer. Thank you, um, Mr. Chair. When I look at uh, clause uh, 50 hour and it talks about the publication of a so social housing transaction, uh, part 1A, it says, publish a notice in the Gazette describing the general nature of the social housing transaction. Perhaps the Minister could actually explain to the House what the test of a general nature is, i.e., could the general nature be, I just sold some homes? Could the general nature be, it was two, but really it was ten? Um, really, I just feel, sir, that there's um, not enough information, and I want to hear from the Minister herself of what the test is that will meet a general nature. Because we are allowing ministers so much freedom to do what they will I believe that we need a lot more specificity around the, the, the frame or the two words general nature. Sir, the second point of clarification I, I would like the Minister to address is part two of 50L, where you got B, uh, part two B, where we say ensure that the notice remains on the site and accessible to members of the public at all reasonable times. Again, if the Minister would like to explain to us What's the exceptions or what's reasonable? So when is a, not a reasonable time? And I guess it's important that because this document is so wafer thin when it comes to accountability on the ministers, I would implore the minister that we need to tighten up on statements like general nature, that we do need to tighten up on what reasonable time is simply because you are asking for much more power than we've ever seen any ministers um, uh, have in terms of our social housing stock, our ho social housing objectives, because right now, this particular legislation doesn't meet any of those tests. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair.